In this video, I'd like to talk about the importance that the histogram plays when editing your raw photos. So as you can see, I've opened up an unedited image of a beautiful swan. Now it's basically got all the defaults given to it by camera raw itself. Um, I haven't actually made any adjustments whatsoever. Now it was shot at f11 at 1 250th of a second at ISO 400. And as you can see, here are the current uh, distribution of values across the histogram. Now the histogram itself is basically a graphical representation of the data or information that is distributed across your entire photograph. Now the main importance that the histogram plays for you when editing your photographs is it will tell you whether or not you have blown out your highlights or clipped your shadows, which is quite important and especially important in this particular shot where I've got some very distinct highlights in the swan's feathers. Now, as you can see in the histogram, you've got a range of different colors uh, that are displayed and presented to you. The histogram itself displays additive and subtractive colors, additive being red, green, and blue, and subtractive being cyan, magenta, and yellow. The histogram also displays luminance values, which is essentially all the colors combined into one value that is called luminance or brightness for some of those out there, as, and it's actually displayed in the histogram as white, as you can clearly see just here. You'll also notice in the top left hand and top right hand corner of the histogram, there are two arrows. Each one of these are basically clipping warnings. So the histogram itself goes from shadows on the left hand side right the way through to highlights on the right. So on the left hand top corner you've got the shadows uh, clipping warning, which we're going to click on and turn that on. And what you'll notice is in the shadows just above the, the bill of the swan is that all this blue has just come in. And that's showing you that the shadows are actually being clipped, uh, uh, especially in the blue area. Now, if we go across and turn on the highlight clipping warning, you'll notice that the highlights in the feathers, particularly in the reds, have been blown out. So what you want to do with this type of clipping information is make your adjustments so that you actually avoid blowing out or clipping your shadows or highlights. So what I would do is make your settings, playing with your sliders and adjusting them so the actual highlight information is not clipped like so and if we go to the blacks we can reduce the uh, black input here and you'll notice that it actually removes the highlighted uh, blue for the clipping of the shadows. There is also another way to look at this information that is actually a bit more simplified and a bit easier to distinguish as opposed to viewing the clipping information directly over your image. Um, with all the other color information that you'd actually have present. And to do that, what we do is we'll jump back to default where those values are blown out. And if we hold down Alt on a PC, the Alt key on a PC, I should say, or the Option key on a Mac, and do the same thing that I did before by dragging the Exposure um, slider, you'll notice that the screen's gone black, and it's now displaying all the areas on the image that are actually blown out in the highlights. And as we slowly adjust the slider in the direction, in the opposite direction, you'll notice that they'll actually disappear. And what you want to do is you want to get to the point where just they disappear uh, without going too far past that point. Now we can do the same also for the shadows. If we jump down to the black and hold down the Alt key or Option key once again, you'll notice that the screen is actually white and it's actually displaying the shadows that are blown out in your image. Or sorry, the shadows that are clipped in your image. So once again, if we just reduce the black value, you'll notice that these will slightly uh, decrease in the amount of areas that are actually clipped in your shot. So hopefully that gives you a reasonable overview of how you can use the histogram when editing your raw files. Now, please take into account that the histogram is a starting point and a guide when editing your photos. I mean, sometimes you may have a perfect histogram, but your photo may not 
be punchy enough or may not stand out off the canvas enough or it may not be what you originally visualized so what you sometimes need to do is make a compromise between the histogram and your image in order to get what you want but at least you have that starting point and that guide to help you along the way